Hi, in this video we're going to look at rules of indices or powers. Um, the vast majority of what I'm going to be talking about is a GCSE higher topic, although some of the easier questions could be on a foundation paper as well. Um, it's a grade C going up to B, A, even an A star, uh, depending on the complexity of the question. In this video I'm mainly going to look at, I'm going to show you what the rules of indices are that you need to know, and we're going to look at two different things. We're going to look at simplifying expressions, and we're going to look at evaluating expressions. Simplifying, more often than not we'll have some algebra in there, um, and we might be leaving our answer in terms of X or A or whatever the letter is. Evaluating, it means we'll probably end up with a number, um, and that number could be a whole number, or it might be a fraction. What I really want to do first of all is just show you what the rules are. Um, if you can think of any of these rules of indices as I'm going through, um, by all means be making your notes at the same time. Um, I'm going to go through and start off, I'm going to do all these algebraically as well, so that you can um, make notes and, and apply it to any sort of context. So first of all, if we've got multiplying, so if we're multiplying something, we might have something that looks like this a to some power, I'm calling it m, multiplied by a to another power. Now, the important thing here is that the base numbers are the same. So this could be 2 and 2, or 5 and 5, or x and x, but it doesn't really matter as long as this and this are the same. If this is the case, then we add our powers. It becomes a to the m plus n. So for example, if I've got 2 to the power 6 multiplied by 2 to the power 8, my answer is 2 to the power of 14. Okay, so when our bases are the same, when the number at the bottom is the same, and we're multiplying, then we add our powers. Okay, we can do a similar thing when we're dividing. If we have a to the m divided by a to the n, then instead of adding our powers, we take the powers away. So it's a to the m minus n. And again, if I do a quick number example as well, let's have 3 to the 6 divided by 3 to the 2. It gives me the answer of 3 to the 4. Okay, let's keep going. Um, the next one, if I've got an, a number or a letter to a power m, and that's in brackets, and it's all raised to a new power, then it's the same as multiplying the powers together. So a to the m n. And again, I'll give you an example. Uh, 3, oops, just rub that bit out. If I've got... Um, I'll do a different number just for a change, 4 squared all to the power of 3 is the same as 4 to the power of 6. Okay, so I've multiplied my powers together. Then I've got one or two um, fractional and negative ones, and this is where it starts to become an A, an A star type topic. So let's say I've got A to the power minus m. This becomes 1 over a to the m. Okay, so uh, 6 to the minus 2 is the same as 1 over 6 squared, or 1 over 36, if we're evaluating it. Uh, let's keep going. a to the m over n, so some sort of fraction here, would give the nth root of a to the power m. And again, if I give you an example, let's have 8 to the power of, let's have a think, um, 3, no, let's have 2 thirds, 8 to the 2 thirds. That would be the same as the cubed root of 8 squared, Cubed root rate is 2, 2 squared is 4. If we were evaluating it, we'd get 4. And finally, let's have anything to the power of 0 is 1. 
Okay, I'm not going to give you an example of that. Uh, we might see some of those later on as we go through the video. So these are the rules. The things in blue are the things that you need to learn. So you've got to learn these things in blue down here and there may be a combination of these in one question so you might get something to the minus a fraction okay so don't think that it's just going to be um, an individual one you might get several okay let's do some examples so in these I've, I've gone for a range of difficulties again if at this point you would like to pause it and have a go by yourself before I explain what the answers are that's fine otherwise if you want to um, carry on listening I'll explain what to do. So in the first one, you can see that we've got a to the 4 times a cubed. The most important thing to think of first is, are my bases the same? Well, yes, they are. They're both a. So I'm multiplying, which means I have to add my powers. So this becomes a to the 7. I don't need to do anything else. Simplifying this, again, I'm thinking, are my base numbers the same? Yes, 5 to the 7 divided by 5 cubed. When I'm dividing, I take my powers away. So this is the same as 5 to the power 4. I don't, I've not been asked to do anything else other than simplify it. I don't have to give it as an exact value. It's simply 5 to the 4. And the bottom one, again, I'm looking at this thinking, well, I've got all kinds of things going on here. I've got a 12 divided by 2, I've got a c to the power 6 divided by a c to the power 4, and a d divided by a d to the power 4. I'm not going to try and do this in one go, I'm going to break it up into individual pieces. So the first thing I'm going to do is the 12 divided by 2, that's 6. Okay, I've not worried about anything else yet, I've just dealt with the 12 and the 2. Next, I've got a c to the 6 divided by c to the 4. Remember, when we divide him, we take our powers. So this is c squared. And finally, d divided by d to the 4. So d minus 4. This d is almost like it's got a little 1. Okay, so it's a bit like d to the 1. Minus 4 is minus 3. So my final bit is d to the minus 3. And again, as we saw before, we can have negative values of powers. It does something, but we don't need to worry about it. Right now, we can leave it like this. Okay, what if we were asked to evaluate something then? If we were evaluating, what we're actually doing is working out a value. So actually finding a value. That's what the word evaluate means. So here, we've got 125 to the power of a third. Thinking back to our... Rules, what this means is, is the cubed root of 125. Now, you're not going to have this on a calculator paper. These are some of your cube numbers you're going to have to learn. Um, you don't need to learn too many. If I were you, I would think, well, 1 cubed, 2 cubed, 3 cubed, 4 cubed, 5 cubed is probably going to be enough. We might go for 6 cubed as well. Okay, so again, this is a little bit of an aside, but well worth knowing your cubed numbers for this type of topic. 1 cubed is 1 times 1 times 1, which is 1. 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. 3 cubed, 3 times 3, which is 9, times 3 again, 27. 4 times 4, 16, times 4 again, 64. 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. And 6 times 6 is 36, times 6 again is one. Nine, six. Okay, so it's worth knowing some of these just as a bit of an aside for answering these questions. So the cubed root of 125, we can see over here, is 5. Okay, let's look at the next one. Here, we've got 3 to the minus 3 times 3 to the 7 divided by 3 to the 0. Okay, let's deal with the top bit first. 3 to the minus 3 times 3 to the 7 is the same as adding my power. So minus 3 add 7 is 4. So I've got 3 to the power 4 divided by, well 3 to the 0, anything to the power of 0 is 1. So divided by 1. I've got 3 to the power of 4. Now the reason I said it's worth knowing your cube numbers is because we can use that to work out the next little bit. 
If you know that 3 cubed is 27, then 3 to the power 4 is going to be 27 multiplied by 3. So that's going to give us 81. Okay, next one, 4 to the minus 2. Remember that minus means 1 over. So this is 1 over 4 squared. I know what 4 squared is, it's 4 times 4. So this is 1 over 16. Again, I've actually found a value. I can't simplify it anymore. It's as easy as it gets. And finally, again, a cubed root of 64. Looking at my list over here, we can see that that would be 4. Again, it's well worth knowing these to be able to do this sort of question. Okay, here's a couple for you to have a go at then. Um, the first one says evaluate this, give your answer as a fraction. And the second one, evaluate this, and again, write your answer as a fraction. At this point, pause the video, give it a go, and I'll explain how to do it in a minute. Okay, so I'm just going to split the page in two. Let's have a look at this one first of all. So we've got 9 over 100, all to the power of 3 over 2. Well, I'm going to deal with the half bit first. This is um, 3 halves, if you like. Anything to the power of a half is the same as square rooting. So this is the same as the square root of 9 over square root of 100, which is 3 over 10. Now, the 3 up here, I haven't yet used. So, actually, what this is, is that cubed, that's this, cubed, which is 3 times 3 times 3 is 27, over 1,000. Okay, so the first thing I did was I dealt with the half, I then cubed everything. So we have the square root and then cubed it. If you weren't sure about this and breaking it up, it might be worth going back and looking at the video on thirds where I explain that in a bit more detail. Okay, and the second one, we've got 27 to the third multiplied by 2 to the minus 3. Well, 27 to the third is the same as a cubed root of 27 multiplied by 2 to the minus 3 that's 1 over 2 cubed three, the th cubed root of uh, 27 is 3 multiplied by 1 over 8 which gives me an answer of 3 8 hopefully you got those right if not go back look at your notes on um, laws of indices and see if you can see where I got these answers from as ever um, take some revision notes through the video and if you want to make a few notes at the end this is a time to do it um, what I've said is you must learn the rules of indices that I showed you before um, there's only half a dozen it's well worth learning them to get those higher marks and actually if you're going to go on to study A level you need to be able to understand laws of indices really well when you're simplifying um, I would deal with each number at a time and then each letter at a time and just break it down and as a general rule don't try and do all these complex questions in one go deal with them a little bit at a time write down underneath what you've done so if you had a, a more complex one and I'll give you an example over here that might look like um, let's go with 8 to the power of um, a third, in fact let's make it minus a third um, multiplied by 2 um, to the power of 5 then I'm not going to be able to do that in one go I'm going to break it up so 8 to the minus a third let's think about it so let's deal with the third bit first in fact let's deal with the minus bit first it might even be easier minus makes it 1 over so I've got 1 over the cubed root of 8 I haven't dealt with this at all yet so multiply by 2 to the 5 the cubed root of 8 is uh, 2 so this is the same as a half multiplied by 2 to the 5 2 to the 5 is 2 times 2 which is 4 times 2, which is 8, times 2, which is 16, times 2 again, which is 32. So this is the same as a half multiplied by 32, which gives me an answer of 16. 
Okay, so don't try and do these complicated ones in one go. Break it down, it show you working each time what you've done, change one thing at a time, and eventually you'll get the answer. And if not, you'll pick up marks for doing the right thing step by step. Much better to do that than have a guess and get it wrong. Okay, as ever, good luck with your exams. Hope you find the revision videos useful, and fingers crossed you do well in your finals. Bye.